This is Twit. Three short years ago, we talked to your colleague, Kelsey Singer, research scientist for the New Horizons, about the beautiful photos from Pluto. So just to recap, what did we learn from those New Horizons photos of Pluto? From the, the photos, we learned a lot about Pluto, about the, the surface. Um, you know, all we knew about Pluto before we got there was uh, basically where it was and sort of what color it was and that, you know, its, it's brightness varied a lot. You know, looking at the surface in close detail, uh, you can actually start to see the processes going on. You can see that big white surface there, that's a sea of frozen nitrogen. Um, those areas there, that's frozen methane, it, it makes this sort of nice bladed terrain that we call um, as the methane moves across the surface from the equator to the poles and back and forth again. Stuff on Pluto moves around all over the place because of uh, it, it. Basically, its pole points towards the sun, um, so you get these very strong polar winters. So, tell us now about the the new photos that that you just processed and just released. So, the, these new photos are stuff that we're looking at. That's uh, as we drive past them, basically on our way to M69, the next object we're going to go to. M69 is right in the middle of the Kuiper Belt, and uh, along the way, we go through other stuff in the Kuiper Belt. So these are two other objects that we saw along the way. Um, and, you know, they look kind of like fuzzy blobs, um, but they're the two closest KBOs that we've been to other than Pluto. Um, and these are kind of ordinary KBOs. Pluto is the biggest thing in the Kuiper Belt, and these two guys are sort of ordinary. The one on the, the left, we saw it about half, uh, about half an AU, so about half the distance from the Earth to the Sun. And then the one on the right, uh, we saw it about a third of an AU. Again, it's still a fuzzy blob. Um, but based on the, how the brightness changes, we can start to figure out um, you know, what the, the microphysics on the surface is like. Um, you know, when you see a KBO from the Earth, you only ever see it with the Sun at your back. Um, whereas if you, you know, driving past with a spacecraft, you see the brightness change. And so, and the brightness changes because of shadowing and because of, you know, how the little shadows on the surface work and that we can start to figure out what's going on on the surface there, um, which by itself isn't necessarily all that interesting, but it lets us put what we're going to see for ME69 in um, perspective. So KBO, that's Kuiper Belt object? Yeah, so the Kuiper Belt, it's uh, our second asteroid belt. It's the bigger asteroid belt. You know, when I say close flyby and it's a third of an AU, that's, it's really big. <laughs> <laughs> um, so th things are very far apart. There's no chance we're going to hit anything very close. Uh, the only thing that we're heading towards at the moment is ME69 itself. So th they're 3.79 billion miles away so that's pretty clear um it for something that far away yeah well we t for for these images um we, we take about 40 of them uh and then add them up together you know an individual image looks like a pixelated mess um they're, they're 256 by 256 images with a lot of stars in the background so we have to subtract out the stars and get the one little dot that's moving across and that's the the kbo so there's a lot of image processing that goes into this. So how, how are they getting the photos and how, how long does it take to get them back? So we downlink uh, with uh, NASA's Deep Space Network. Uh, so they have a big three uh, 70 meter dishes in California, uh, Australia and uh, Madrid, Spain. And so they we get them slowly back. Our downlink speed is about two kilobits. Um, so that's why we have these uh, reduce size images just to get them down as quick as we can. And uh, so for these individual images, it took them uh, you know, a, couple, a couple of weeks to get everything down. So uh, as an astrophysicist, what were your thoughts on Elon Musk launching his Tesla into space last week? I thought it was awesome and also a little bit disturbing that he was just sending a car out there to join all the rest of the space junk. But tell me what you thought of it. It was great that it worked. Uh, Falcon Heavy could be a really useful asset in launching uh, future missions. Um, New Horizons was the fastest one it launched, but it wasn't using a particularly big rocket. It was using an Atlas V. Uh, so you could do a mission like New Horizons and launch it actually even faster with a, something like a Falcon Heavy. So uh, for, for this sort of research, it's great. 
um, it, the, the, they launched it on a, a trajectory, and then they initially said, oh, no, it's going to the, the, the uh, asteroid belt, and then they had to retract that, and it's not going to the asteroid belt. Um, but it, effectively what they did was make a, a fake near-Earth object, and it's a, it's a potentially hazardous object. I think there's like a 6% chance it's going to hit the Earth within the next million years or something. <laughs> Let, let's hope not. Um, <laughs> so yeah. where where where's where's the New Horizons going? I mean, what what photos will we see from the New Horizon next? So the next the next thing when we uh, turn back on in August, uh, we'll be immediately taking pictures of M six nine. Just what's directly ahead, and that's we're turning on then because that's the first time we could possibly see it as a very very faint dot, um, which isn't scientifically interesting, but it's useful. For navigation purposes so we'll be taking navigation pictures of it starting in august and then and probably won't really get anything useful until september um and then we'll actually you know be guiding in from there uh we'll get very very close pictures of me 69 starting about a week out um and so we'll have a few pictures we download right away we won't be able to download everything right away from the flyby um because it just so happens we'll fly past it uh, when the at solar conjunction. So basically, when ME69 is behind the sun, that happens right after flyby. So we'll take we'll get a few pictures down, then we'll have to wait to make sure that we're not pointing the radio dishes at the sun because you can't talk through the sun. Um, and then we'll be able to get the rest of the pictures down. And in the meantime, uh, beforehand, we'll be taking lots more of these close-up images, much much closer, and we'll hopefully be able to see some if some of these are actually binaries. Um, there are a lot of binaries in the Kuiper Belt that you know, we can't necessarily see from Earth. We can see the bigger ones from Earth. There could be a lot of tight binaries out there, too. So it's sort of like back in the old days when we used to take our roll of Kodak film to the kiosk. We have to wait. Yeah, it's really slow. <laughs> <laughs> well, Simon, thank you so much for joining us. Simon Porter is an astrophysicist at Southwest Research Institute in Colorado. He's a research scientist and part of the New Horizons mission. Thanks so much for coming on.